episode of The Engineer and Our Future podcast. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about some of the strategies as well as things that I do when I'm setting goals for the year, for projects, for different things that I have going on in my life. Recently, uh, this past week was kind of intense. I had my birthday a couple of weeks ago and then we have a we had a baby actually last week, which made me think it would be a great time to start thinking about new ways that I can improve and be more present for my family and kind of narrow down the things that I've been doing and my work and, and volunteering and other things kind of going on in my life. So in this episode, I'm just going to be talking about how I think about goals, how I try to set them and some of the cues that I kind of give myself to accomplish those goals. So let's just jump right into the content for the week. Welcome to the Engineer Our Future podcast, a podcast where I bring you relevant content from personal experiences and guests to help young professionals, students, and international students succeed in their careers. So to start today's episode, I want to give you a quote from James Clear, and it says, goals are useful for setting the direction. Systems are great for actually making progress. So that's something you're going to be seeing in this episode. I'm going to be referencing kind of this method because I think it's very important to not only set the goals that you want to achieve, but you want to be careful with the methods and, and the planning that takes place when you are trying to to achieve those goals. So be, before we talk about how to achieve those goals or how to prepare for those goals, I think it's very important to kind of touch base on what those goals really mean. And typically, personally, I think about goals as something I want to achieve or something that it's kind of down the road or something I want to accomplish in the future. But I read this quote from James Clear, which was really interesting. And he references this other article from Mark Manson, which talks about a different mindset to look at goals. And he mentions that it's not about the end goal, but it's about what kind of pain you want to endure to get there. So if you think about goals and you think about what kind of pain you want to endure to get there, it's going to give you a better idea of if that goal is something you want to pursue or if that goal is something that is not really worth your time and and your effort and all of these things. So if you're like me, you have been setting goals either small or big for who knows how many years. I remember when I was little, I used to play tennis, very competitive. So I I travel a lot within Colombia and I some places in South America and everything. So again, at the beginning of the year, you have goals that you want to achieve and you're going to be looking ahead uh, of how you're going to accomplish those goals. So you set a plan, you set a goal. Okay, I want to be ranked in the top 10 of the country by this date or by the end of the year. That's a very concrete goal. Then once you have the final goal, you kind of back engineer your your way into what kind of st- steps you need to take right now to accomplish that goal. And I, I mentioned this in the, in the previous ep- uh, podcast, about the book, The One Thing, which kind of talks about this concept of focusing on one thing at a time rather than trying to do multiple things kind of over and over and over, over a long period of time that is not going to bring the benefits of just focusing on one thing and kind of try to get that one thing done. So with this in mind, when you're setting a goal and and I kind of, I kind of didn't used to think about this way, but I mean, playing tennis, it's hard work. I mean, competitively, you have to train a lot. I used to play tennis for four hours a day after school. So I was on about 7 or 8 p.m., which was, I mean, fairly late for, for high school. Um, considering I have to get home, take a shower, eat, and then kind of get into doing homework. So the whole process was painful, but the reward what I was is what I was looking for. Another example is basically this podcast and this this content that I'm creating. It's it's not easy. I don't have to do this. It's just a goal of me trying to share things that I have accomplished, trying to share things that I have done, and hopefully help you live a more productive and a more happy life with all of these things that I've been talking about and, and experimenting with and, and sharing with all of you. So the way I think about it is, and the, the way I think about it now is 
okay, I'm making this podcast, I'm making these videos, I'm making this content. Is it worth it? Is it worth the pain of maybe staying an hour later during the night or working on new ideas and kind of be thinking of new processes and video editing and audio editing, all of these things that come along with that. Do I want to endure that pain to produce the content, to get into that goal of helping people down the road? If the answer is yes, then you're on the right track. If the answer is no, then just put that goal aside because that's not for you. You're not going to enjoy the journey of getting to that goal. So again, one of the main things we need to realize when uh, planning on making goals is the difference between the goals and the systems. So as I said, the goals is kind of the, your aim, end result down the road, probably months or even years down the road. The systems are the tactics and the people that are going to help you get to that goal. So here I have a couple of great examples from James Clear. And he says, if you're a coach, your goal is to win a championship. Your system is what your team does at practice each day. Another example is if you're a runner, your goal is to run a marathon. Your system is to train, use your training schedule for the month. And then finally, if you're an entrepreneur, your goal is to build a million dollar business. And your system is the, your sales and marketing processes. So you can see that the goals are down the road, months, probably years down the road. The systems are your day-to-day -day tasks, your day-to-day -day activities that are going to help you get to that goal down the road. So now that you understand the difference between goals and systems and how setting those goals down the road and then back engineer your processes to figure out what systems you need to take and put in place right now or what kind of people you need to bring to your team to accomplish those goals, I think that it's, it's really important to touch on one little concept. And this concept talks about kind of your upper boundary. A lot of times we set goals, okay, I want to lose at least five pounds in the next month or I want to bring X amount of revenue for the company. What about setting the upper boundaries? Because sometimes, and this happens to me quite a bit when I'm trying to work on goals and has happened to me just producing this podcast or videos or, or some of the other things that I have going on is you don't set an upper boundary. So you just try to work as hard as you can for as long as you can. And at the end of the day, you're going to feel burnout. You're not going to be able to produce any more sales or go and um, work out for the week or anything. It's going to be, you, you basically maxed out your threshold of, of activity and of motivation, if, if you will. So I think it's very important to kind of try to set an upper boundary that is reasonable uh, it's kind of hard at the beginning when you are trying to nail down and, and figure out what kind of what kind of accomplishments you can do. So it's something that takes time. And I like to think about goals as a habit of building a habit. If you if you're trying to build a habit of running, you won't wake up one morning and say, "I'm going to run a marathon today," and then just start running. You start slow. You start by maybe running a mile a day, maybe turn it up to a couple miles and all the way until you get to that, that goal of running a marathon down the road. So again, going back to the examples, your goal is to run a marathon. Your systems is your schedule to your practice schedule that you're going to apply and, and take action on every single day. So you can get to that marathon level. Another great way to kind of achieve those goals, again, systems, for example, I like to have all my goals into Notion. It's a great productivity software. I've made a couple of videos on YouTube that I'll be linking on the description below once they come out. But that allows you to have all your goals in one place where you can see them every day and at the same time create tasks or milestones that are going to help you to get, get to that goal. Again, coming back to the, hab the habits analogy, when you're trying to create a habit, you kind of attach those habits to current activities you do. So if you're trying to drink more water, maybe you pour a glass of water the night before and set it in your night nightstand next to your phone or next to something you grab kind of right away in the morning. So that's a visual cue of, okay, I want to drink water. I want to drink more water. Here's the glass of water. I'm going to drink it in the morning. Those kind of things have been proven by many research more effectively to help you develop those new habits 
and in this case, help you achieve the goals by putting those little habits kind of on your daily routine, right? Sticky note on your computer, sticking on your computer, whether put a sticky note in your bathroom, anything you need to do to kind of keep those those goals present in your mind is going to be very valuable down the road. That's what I use Notion and I have a whole template that I'm going to be linking in the description below of some of the questions kind of I ask myself when I'm starting a new goal or if I'm looking uh, for doing uh, or I'm looking to do something new or achieve something new kind of in my personal life. And the importance of creating tasks and giving those tasks de uh, deadlines and due dates and, and all these other things is being mindful about these goals you want to accomplish. So if you set a goal and then you say, okay, this is my goal, but I'm not going to assign any task yet. I'm going to wait a few weeks. You're being too soft with that goal. You need to be, you need to be bold. You need to be mindful of that goal and, as soon as you start taking action on, on kind of the first domino of achieving that goal, the, that first task that's going to lead to the next, next task and the following and the following, that's how you are creating the habit of being more active and being more receptive to achieving those goals down the road. So as I said, the systems are the most important part of creating a goal. So I want to talk about kind of what the system systems may look like. You can incorporate the the goal to maybe a bigger goal or a goal that is relatable to kind of uh, your mission on what you want to do so the podcast uh, making videos it's part of a smaller goal of influencing new students influencing other young professionals to increase and and be more productive and be more aware of the engineering profession so that's part of that that bigger goal of being more influential among students and other engineers and producing a podcast and a youtube channel is kind of a smaller goal with that bigger goal again the tools that you use are going to be really critical to achieving those goals just because if you make a tool enjoyable to use you're more likely to enjoy it and use it and and check it constantly and that's one of the reasons i use notion and that's i mean i use notion for a whole a whole bunch of things but having the ability to have my goals there front in the front page every time i wake up and open my computer that's where my goals are is very helpful and very valuable to see and be more mindful of achieving those goals so every morning i look at my task what goal is related to that task? What is my progress within that goal? So I can see everything there. I enjoy using Notion. It's something that I've been working on for a few months now. And it's, it's just overall a great tool for organization, project management, all of the things um, that I do kind of on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And you may have heard this concept, but just gamifying your goals, assigning experience points or assigning milestones or rewards kind of down the road are going to make you be more likely to achieve those goals. So that's kind of one of the reasons I use Notion. And I'm going to actually link a very interesting kind of setup in Notion where it's a whole basically gamification process to achieve goals, complete tasks, and all these things that I, I, think I found really useful. Certain areas, I haven't really incorporated the whole thing because it's it's not kind of what I'm looking for in my setup, but it's a very interesting concept of basically assigning milestones and assigning rewards and experience points that are going to keep you motivated to achieve those goals. And again, with that all being said, it's okay to fall off track. We all have batches down the road. It's really hard to stay motivated for long periods of time. So don't be discouraged if you feel like you're falling off track of your goals and always seek to kind of rebound and, and, Look for ways to improve your productivity and improve kind of your method to to achieve those goals. Again, here I'm giving you kind of some of the systems that I like to use to stay motivated, to keep the goals kind of front in line and, and being able to take action on them basically every single day if I can and uh, knowing exactly where I stand within those goals. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is obviously smart goals. You probably have heard this a thousand times if you are in the productivity space or or if you work at a company and you have kind of meetings to set goals and such, this is a very popular and very common concept 
to, to set goals. So SMART goals are for specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time-bound. And if you look back to kind of the points that I gave you in this, in this episode and kind of the things I've been talking about, all of these things are embedded in the things that I currently do. So it's, it's a different way of thinking it. But at the same time, it's, it's, this SMART goals is something that is, it proves that it works. So it's kind of hard to get away from it and try to reinvent invent the wheel and doing a whole, a, bunch, a whole bunch of new things. But at the same time, I like to look for kind of new alternatives and, and new ways of thinking about how to achieve those goals and one of the milestones that I want to set for myself every single day to get me to that point. So at the end of the day, when you're looking to achieve goals and, and the systems that come behind them, you have to create a very systematic way to approach those goals. If you try to reinvent the wheel every single time, it's going to be really hard for you to kind of get in the habit of, of being present and being um, actionable with your task and all the things you have to go get through to accomplish those goals down the road. The good thing about kind of applying these concepts is the, the habits and the goals activities that you put around it is going to help you improve in a whole on a whole other spectrum of activities like time, time management, project management, habit development, and, and a whole other things. Just because of the skills that you develop when you're trying to achieve the goals, creating systems, uh, practicing all these time management and project management skills that go into achieving a goal if you're doing it in a systematic and consistent way. So with, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you get something out of it and... Hopefully you are guys staying safe and, and let me know what are some of the techniques and tactics you guys use to achieve your goals. I know there's got to be hundreds of thousands of ways to approach different goals, but this is just one that I found really useful and very help, helpful uh, using Notion and using kind of those programs that help me bring those tasks and bring those goals kind of present in my mind constantly. and at the same time, attaching those tasks and those goals to current activities so I don't fall off track or lose motivation or or kind of try to reinvent the wheel every single time that I'm trying to do something new. As always, thank you so much for listening and I will talk to you guys in a future episode. Feel free to share this on social media. Reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram if you have any questions. Yeah, thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. But for now, let's continue engineering our future.